CNBC's website. Are you smarter than a GOP candidate? Grade level assessment of candidates' spoken words in the first three Republican debates. Donald Trump is at the youngest end of the spectrum, averaging a fifth grade level of vocabulary. Maybe that's why he's doing so well. Well, what did I just tell you? These people on that stage, the CNBC moderators, it doesn't matter, ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, you name it, they all have a certain set of beliefs. Republicans are stupid, they are Neanderthals. You are mind-numbed robots. You like Trump because you think he hates Mexicans and you hate Mexicans, and that's why they love Trump, and that's why Trump's doing well, and that's what they think. They don't hear Trump say, he's going to make this country great again. They don't hear Trump say, we're going to start winning. We're going to beat ISIS. We're going to beat China. We're going to beat Mexico in trade deals. We are going to return to being a legitimate superpower. No, the media doesn't hear that. Because they are so obsessed and so convinced that you're stupid, that you're dumb, that you're dense, that you're racist, that you're sexist, that you're bigoted, that you're homophobic, that anybody who gets your support must also be the same. And that's the starting point. All of that, they assume. All of that, they know they're right about. So Trump's support is illegitimate. It's made up of mean-spirited, stupid, deliverance-type bigots. And that is what they really think. This is why I don't have any patience for any of our so-called pseudo-intellectuals in Washington who want to make friends with these people, who want to be in the club with them, who want to be wherever with them. Where we have nothing in common. They have no desire to see us as similar, equals, with respect, or any of that. Their strict, avowed purpose is to render us irrelevant as a political power. That means defeat after defeat after defeat, and they don't care how. Their minds are never going to change about who we are and about who Trump is. So here we have, are you smarter than a GOP candidate from CNBC? Grade level assessments of candidates spoken words First three GOP debates. Donald Trump at the youngest end of the spectrum, averaging a fifth grade level of vocabulary. Maybe that's why he's doing so well in the polls. His simple, straightforward talk has resonated with the electorate. The Trump campaign did not respond to requests for comment. But the competition isn't all that great. On the other extreme end, we have Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is the smartest guy in the Republican room, and his vocabulary represents that of a ninth grader. Um, you can say whatever, I've got it right here, my formerly nicotine-stained fingers. Of course it's straight-up BS. And the day after the debate, you what, you expected these people to be humble after this shaming last night? You expected them to be apologetic? You expected them to be chagrined? Hell no, not sheepish. They're doubling down. Are you smarter than a GOP candidate? So Donald Trump speaks at a fifth grade level, but, you know, the competition isn't all that great because true Cruz is the smartest and he speaks at a ninth grade level. Ted Cruz has more intellect in his little finger than John Harwood will accumulate in his entire worthless life. You know this business about qualifications. Who the hell is Becky Quick? Who is Carl Quintanella? Who is Harwood? Why are they vaunted authoritarians over these people seeking the presidency? Why are they accorded status such that they get to determine whether or not somebody's qualified because they are journalists. Well, what's the qualification for a journalist today? Very simple. Democrats good, Republicans bad. Good, you got the job. That's all it takes. That's the nub of it. Democrats good, Republicans bad, you get the gig. 
turn it around. What have these journalists have? Here you have here you have Ben Carson. There is no finer human being on this earth. There's no finer man in terms of character, morality, dignity, love of his fellow man, children, pediatric surgeon, has performed surgical miracles. And here we have three insignificant nabobs trying to destroy him last night on the basis that he can't do mathematics or that his tax plan doesn't add up or some such thing. Sorry, folks, I have lost my patience for this. Becky Quick? What is Becky Quick without somebody at CNBC deciding to need somebody who looks good on TV and they hire her because she can talk about crony capitalism, which is what CNBC does? You would think a business network would be pro-business. You had a business network that's pro-government and pro-business that is in bed with government. But businesses that aren't in bed with government, they're the bad guys on CNBC. We are to sit here and read how our candidates have no better than ninth grade speaking ability versus what we saw on CNBC last night and every day on their network, which, by the way, nobody's watching anymore. There's another curious reason why Reince Priebus chose him to host a debate, but that's a that's a whole other story. I just I'm insulted by this presumption that all of them are the brainiacs. They're the smart ones. They're the qualified ones. Here's Donald Trump. I don't care what you think of his personality. Frankly, it's none of your damn business. You go do what he's done and then Tell him he's worthless. Go do what Ben Carson's done and then tell him and tell the rest of us that he doesn't know what he's doing. Or any of the others up there. Going after Carly Fiorina on this H&P business and giving Hillary Clinton a pass? Well, I know it's the name of the game, but the point is... This is so long ago been obvious. I mean, why does the war on women even... Can you believe the folly? The war on women. This, the, the whole idea that a political party seeks to win elections by conducting a war on women. And the only reason that exists is because a Clinton hack moderated a debate on ABC. Taking time off from his job as a host of an early morning show on ABC. We have a Clinton War Room specialist disguised as a journalist on ABC. And he moderated a debate. And he asks Mitt Romney about contraception somewhere, and it becomes a war on women. The intellectual folly of the whole concept of a political party having a war on women, and yet it's alive and well, and it lives and breathes, and it's out there each and every day, and it exists as a legitimate arsenal in the Democrat Party weapon. I, I, it, it boggles the mind. And to me, it would be so easy to nuke this stuff. With Ted Cruz showing the way for people, this is the way to deal with these people each and every day. On Meet the Press, on Face the Nation... Wherever you encounter these people, throw it right back at them. If you're going to go on their shows, you have to treat them for what they are. You are going on shows moderated by Democrat Party campaign activists. Paul Begala's over there at CNN. James Carville is where anybody will have him. Now David Axelrod, he's making the rounds from MSNBC to CNN. David Plouffe, who ran the Obama campaign. Meanwhile, the Republican consultants that get hired are of all the losers who are running around basically agreeing with all that the Democrat consultants say. They all have the same enemy, conservatives, you and me. And it's legit because we are their biggest threat. We do threaten their power because we can beat them. Anyway, another break. 
We've run up against the wall here, but more of your phone calls are coming up. Sit tight back after this. After they made it. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got the story on Harwood lying about about Rubio's tax plan and and even he corrected his own lie in a previous column and lied about that. So I've got that here. I don't want to got bogged down with individual lies. The whole thing last night was a lie. Every one of those moderators is a lie. They are liars and pretending falsely who they are. The whole thing from the get-go was staged. There was nothing legitimate about that last night. Of course Harwood's a liar. Of course he misrepresents what Republicans do. Of course he lies about their tax plans. And then we got CNBC with their big story today, Are You Smarter Than a GOP Candidate? College-level speaking not required at the GOP debates is the subhead. Well, I just happen to have a story here in my formerly nicotine-stained thing. Who runs the damn schools in this country? Is it not the Democratic freaking party? And the American left, who have had monopoly control over it for as long as you and I have been alive. Detroit public schools, 93% not proficient in reading. 96% not proficient in math. Harwood probably could teach there. The Department of Education has published fiscal information on the Detroit public schools for the 2011-2012 school year. That year, the Detroit public schools had total expenditures of $18,000 per student. It included 13000 per student for current expenditures, 3000 per student for capital outlays, and $1,700 per student for interest on the school system's debt. 93% not proficient in reading Detroit public schools. 67% 8th graders not proficient in reading nationwide. Who's running the school system? The very people moderating that debate last night with their smug arrogance telling us they've got all the answers, they're the brilliant ones, they're the smart ones, they have all the policies, they have destroyed this country, they're in the process of governing a country in decline. They are engaged in implementing policies which will further this decline. We have people running for the presidency who are trying to save this country, and of course they're the enemy. They would be Republicans. But every one of the cities on this list, the national is 67%, Detroit is 93%, Albuquerque, Atlanta, Austin, Baltimore City, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, Cleveland, Dallas, Detroit, D.C., Fresno, Jefferson County, Kentucky, Los Angeles. They're all over 50% in students that cannot read at an 8th grade level. And we get a story of how the Republican candidate is so stupid that the smartest one speaks at a ninth grade level. Well, I guess that means everybody in America can relate to them. Thanks to the Democrat Party running the country's education system. Look, folks, I, I, I normally don't, don't get this, this agitated, but this is, this is the result. This is, this is a little bit of an explosion here after just 25 years of... of, of Reacting to all this stuff um, in, a, in, a, in a muted and restrained way, but I, after this this boondoggle last night, what it really was, um, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm I'm kind of frustrated. I'm beyond that point where I'm just content to wait for people to figure it out. Meaning, what's going on? I mean, this is just. Our country's hanging in the balance because of this stuff. And the idea that we somehow feel we have to kowtow or impress or whatever these people in the media if we are to win or advance our ideas is just, I think that was illustrated last night, the exact opposite. And I don't think by any stretch, if you, you look at public opinion polls on various industries and businesses and the public opinion of them. Journalism is below the public opinion of Congress. Now, Congress, public opinion is always in the gutter. That's always been the case. 
journalism's even below that for a reason. Even even low information voters don't think they're getting the truth. It's one of the reasons so many of them are turned to the Kardashians. At least when they lie about them, it doesn't matter. Unfiltered. What else? What else? Um, oh, one email before we get back to sound bites. And, you know, it's a legitimate question. The uh, rush, I've been listening for a long time, and, and whenever the media gets unfair, you always have said, um, well, hey, you can complain about it or you can deal with it. This is the lay of the land. If you want to be elected as a Republican, the media is one of the obstacles. So why all this complaining about it? And it's a good question, and I, 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 it's not complaining it's just that, folks, I, I t- I've reached a point where I, I'm changing my mind on this. Why? This is what I started asking myself. Why is it that Republicans just have to accept and deal with the lie that they're a bunch of racists and bigots and homophobes and sexists and extremists? I'm through with it. I've, I've had that crap said about me for 27 years. Every other Republican has had it said about them. Why do we have to sit here and accept that that's the lay of the land? Why do we sit here and say, yeah, they get to lie about us? And it just culminated for me last night with this debate when, I, when, when, when what was really on display last night was every assumption the left makes about us. And as I said, the answers to those questions last night were irrelevant as far as the media is concerned. The, the bullets. Last night was an assassination attempt on a, a political assassination of every one of those candidates. They were all in the political crosshairs and the questions were the bullets to take them out. It didn't matter what the answers to those questions were. The idea was to destroy them all last night and then get applause and pats on the back from fellow media members and fellow Democrats today. That's what the objective was. Ever since Trump came on the scene, ever since Trump has been leaving, the objective, the media has been, i convinced, in a private little contest, see who can be the one to take Trump out. And Harwood gave it his best shot last night. And Becky Quick gave it her shot. And Carl Quintanella. And none of them, and very few of the Republican establishment, have the slightest idea why Trump is sitting where he is. They do not understand the bond of connection Trump has made with his voters. They don't understand the bond of connection Ted Cruz has made with his. They haven't the slightest idea. They think, just to reiterate this, because this is crucially important, The mindset of the Democrat Party, I don't care if it's media people or if it's elected officials or if it's consultants, they all think that you, Republican voters, are stupid and dumb and incapable of independent thought. Every opinion you have is the result of somebody influencing you. You are racist, you are sexist, you're bitter clingers, you're mean-spirited, you're homophobes and all of that. Because you're Republicans, because you're conservative, that's what they really think of you. And so candidates, to get your vote, have to go there. So the candidates are also racist, sexist, bigot, homophobic, whatever it is, to get your vote. And I've just finally said, why do we have to sit here and accept, and, and why does every Republican have to just say it's, it's an accepted part of the lay of the land that you go into every race as a presumptive racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe, whatever it is? What chance does anybody have when that is the so-called lay of the land, and especially when it is all concocted and totally made up, and in fact, just the opposite? If anybody's racist and sexist and bigoted, it's the people on the left. That's how they look at people. They look at people and they first see skin color, then they see sexual gender, then they see orientation, and then they see and they try to make everybody they see fit into some victim class. Because nobody is capable of taking care of themselves in their world. Nobody's able to do it. So they don't respect individual achievement. Those on the Republican side who have achieved must have cheated. Must have cheated somebody. Must have stolen. Must have committed some kind of... I'm just sick and tired of these presumptions. As the lay of the land, as things Republicans have to accept and deal with. The days are over that that's the case as far as I'm concerned.
Now back to the audio sound bites. Uh, Marco Rubio. Nope, nope, yep, yep, yep. Marco Rubio. We're going to start there. He was on with Charlie Rose this morning on CBS. We have two bites, numbers 21 and 22. Remember Rubio last night, and this really offended him on the left. Because they were all talking about a great week Hillary Clinton had last week. Remember that? It was such a great week. Boy, Hillary just she took him to task in a debate, and she ran rings around the Benghazi committee. Oh, she had a great week. And Rubio put you people had a great week. She was exposed as a liar last week. What are you talking about? That didn't sit well with Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose was not happy with Rubio. He said to him on CBS this morning, you called Hillary Clinton a liar. Hillary Clinton lied about Benghazi. There's no doubt about that, Charlie. I mean, there are emails in which she was talking to her family, and she was telling them that there was an attack on that consulate that was due to a terrorist attack by al-Qaeda elements, and then she was going around the country talking to the families of the victims and to the American people and saying, no, no, this is because of some video that someone produced. Senator, that you, led know, to you know that this CIA she absolutely was changing, lied about the CIA it. was changing its own assessment of what happened there during that time zone. That's not accurate. She knew that it was a terrorist attack, as she shared by email with various people. And yet she continued to perpetuate the lie. Hey, Charlie, are you really uh, watching him Candy Crowley in disguise? You gained a lot of weight, Charlie, you're Candy Crowley? What do you mean helping Hillary? Well, you must, you must understand, Marco, CIA was changing its assessment of what happened there during the time zone. During the time zone? You mean time frame, Charlie? Learn to speak at a college age level. How about it, Charlie? During the time zone, Charlie? Realize how illiterate that sounds? I know your audience probably can't speak at a second grade level, but at least try. She lied, Charlie. She, she admitted her lie to foreign leaders. This was Rubio's point. She told everybody that mattered that it wasn't a video, that it was a pre-planned terror attack. But Charlie's got a circle of wagons. Charlie's got to defend Hillary Clinton. Because she came under assault last night at that really, at that, at that debate. And the CNBC guys, they didn't show up their end. So CBS had to move in today, protect Hillary at all costs. So Charlie then said, well, look, if you're calling her a liar, by saying she perpetuated a lie. Why do you think she did it? Why? What was her motive? That's very clear why, because they were in the middle of a 2012 re-election in which President Obama had made the claim that al-Qaeda was being defeated so and on the run, that and this Clinton counteracted lied. that narrative. You were saying, Senator, that Hillary Clinton lied because she wanted to help Barack Obama in his re-election campaign. That's a serious charge. Yes. Uh, is that, well, it's the truth. I mean, that's not only why she did it. That's why everyone in the administration did it. You hear... Marco is incredulous that Charlie has never even thought of this. It has never occurred to the second grade reading Charlie Rose. Well, I'm telling you, I'm fed up with this. It has never occurred to Charlie Rose that they might be trying to win an election by lying and concocting false stories about their incompetence in foreign policy and national security. It never occurs to Charlie Rose that his precious Hillary and Obama might lie to win an election, and it's a very serious charge to say that would happen. So you know, who's the criminal here? Marco Rubio. That's a very serious charge. Hey, Charlie, serious charge. That must mean we need an investigation, Charlie. Well, I doubt he would say there's any evidence. It's not about the evidence, Charlie. It's about the seriousness of the charge. Isn't that how you get us? Make up some concocted fake accusation about something and say it's serious and then say it demands an investigation? We don't even need to investigate this. Rubio's right. But the point is, it never even occurred. This may be, because these people are so cloistered and so sequestered, they don't talk to anybody but themselves. They don't read anything but each other. I'll bet Charlie Rose, for the first time, maybe the first time he's heard anybody say that Hillary and Obama made up the story about the video to cover the fact that their campaign message was a lie, that they had vanquished terrorism. It was over. They killed bin Laden. This is why, I for these people to sit here and tell us how stupid we are, 
and close-minded and bigoted. These are the people so cloistered within themselves, they haven't the slightest idea what anybody other than their small group of people says or thinks. And that's why the American people may as well be living in a foreign country to them. That's how they end up being called bitter clingers. On C-SPAN today, a caller named Victor in Silver Spring got through to the Washington Journal. Finally, the candidates are realizing that the mainstream media is not their friend, that the mainstream media is part of the Democrat Party. And for years, I mean for years, Rush Limbaugh has told us over and over again that the mainstream media is a part of the Democrat Party, and it's a good thing that the candidates pointed this out last night, so it shows me that some of the candidates are definitely listening to Rush Limbaugh. And they try to tell us that we're stupid. There's another brilliant guy on our side getting through the C-SPAN. We take a break. In the November Limbaugh letter, Russian press.